for me, it's a bit like being somewhere that's star-studded because you've read all these research papers and all these names for years and years and suddenly they're there in front of you and everyone is just so friendly, so open, so willing to share. You know, it really feels as though everybody pulls together as a community, which I think is, is really special. I am looking forward to the cancer session. I, I think that's just new information that we haven't talked about at other meetings or as in-depth as we're getting more and more information as the days go along. And so I think that's an important piece to also bring because that's probably one of the most important questions I always get from emails or phone calls is, can I start on the diet for cancer? And I'm a pediatric dietitian, so I don't have as much experience in the adult cancer realm, but I've had a handful of them, so I'm looking forward to hearing other people's experiences with it as well. The most important thing, I think, is the movement of ketogenic diet outside of epilepsy, uh, which we have already begun in a small way in India, using it in cancer, because as you know, cancer of the brain, especially the very serious um, malignant tumors are it's it's a it's a death sentence and if you can prolong that life and i think the ketogenic diet is going to do that give you a prolonged life with with the quality of life radiation chemo it may prolong your life but the quality of life is is horrible if i had a cancer in my brain i would not go that way i would go the the ketogenic diet way Tumor cells need to ferment, and this was shown by Otto Warburg many years ago. That is the defining characteristic of all cancer cells, or nearly all cancer cells. They will ferment, all right? They, use, they ferment two molecules, glucose and glutamine, all right? So if you target those molecules, and the ketogenic diet is effective in doing this, you can stop this disease. But you have to realize that this is a, a metabolic disease. It's not a genetic disease. And unfortunately, the tragedy is that for decades, we have viewed cancer as a genetic disease, spending hundreds of billions, if not trillions of dollars, trying to define therapies based on the idea that this is a genetic disease. When in fact, it is not. It's a mitochondrial metabolic disease, which makes, which makes it clear why we've had no major advances in cancer, nor will we ever have major advances in cancer until it becomes recognized as a metabolic disease. Once you make that recognition, then pr approaches like ketogenic diets make perfect sense. And, they, and you can see how the patients respond. And you can clearly see that this is an effective tool to manage the disease. Is it the only tool? No. But it's certainly a very powerful one. And it moves the whole view of what the disease is in a different direction. But as long as the field thinks that this is a gene-based disease, then you have this confusion and lack of progress. So this is one of the things that needs to be understood. Then it becomes clear why the ketogenic diet and these approaches that people are talking about at this meeting make so much sense and have so much potential for therapeutic efficacy.